Kamu gak paham deh Out of all the ninja, who do you like the most? And it's okay if you don't say my character. I mean, it's totally okay. Do you have that air gun? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, who do you like? Do you, do you know? I'm gonna go with you, buddy. Really? Yeah. You like the robot? Yeah, I think he's cool. And, and I think what you do with him is, is a really great job because you, you make him really interesting. Cheers, man. This wasn't supposed to be about me. But, but that's I appreciate good. that. Good job. Yeah, thanks, man. No, and I'm not really saying it because he's here. Yeah. It's the truth. Because when I've been in session listening to what he's doing, I've often thought that I thought he's doing a remarkable job with this character because those that's one of the characters that you, you either got to be really on point with. Yeah. And if you're not, um, he could, he just end up being really bland and, and he's not. He's do, fun. Do I make it up to Michael Dobson Productions yes. or do I, where do I send the check? <laughs> I thought, I thought, but, I thought but, it was going to be cash. <laughs> Yeah. Or there. There's a new Netflix show uh, called The Deep. You're yes. Right. What, what part do you play on that one? I play Will Necton. Will Necton. Yeah. What's he about? Will Necton. Actually, you know what? This is kind of cool because this. Um, I'm mixed race, right? And so is Will Necton. You're mixed race. Yeah. What? What's the mix? I know. What's the mix? Well, my my mom is is um, from Africa. And your dad's British. My dad's British, yeah. yeah. That explains the curly hair. Exactly. Yes. I didn't think I was going to learn anything today, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> so it's so it's pretty cool. That's awesome. It is really cool because I, because it's been the first time that um, I've actually got to play a character that what really is my bloodline. Will Nickton sounds like this. Hmm. He's just, uh, he's got a sort of a deeper voice print. How does it feel knowing that you voiced one of Ninjago's longest running villains? I mean, seriously, you're in season one, rebooted, Tournament of Elements, and Day of the Departed. How does it feel? It feels great. If you could uh, swap places with any voice actor, and play their character, who would you pick and why? Paul, because I just want to just do that, just to just to take the work away from him. That's so mean! That, that's uh, the older brother picking I, on the other. Yeah, because I did shoot him, remember. <laughs> <laughs> do you have uh, a Pythor minifigure? No! Okay, seriously, dude. And I've and, been looking for one, I can't find one anywhere. Every time I go down the toilet, I, I, the toilet. <laughs> the every time toilet. you go down the toilet, I go down I'm the, looking for pine every time I go down I'm scrubbing. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I find things very similar to that serpentine thing, but not him. <laughs> I'm very upset about that. <laughs> um, it looks like a snake, <laughs> it but it's like, not. And I try to fashion it, plain and purple and stuff, but... <laughs> That's, people always say, so wrong. People people. say, you gotta get rid of that, that's not right. Something right, really wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's going around with Febreze around the house. <laughs> Honey, I can, you gotta understand, I can't find one of these anywhere. <laughs> this is so gross. <laughs> it's really bad. I think Pythor comes in sets. Like, I think you might is that have why I couldn't a find that? set rather than... I haven't been able to find okay. it. Okay. I've seen them on the internet. If somebody can help us out and maybe say, like, the cheapest set that he could get Pythor like if we can't just get a single Pythor what's a cheap set that he can maybe get and send us the yes just let me know and I'll let him know thanks man all right because you need a Pythor that would be cool yeah. Pythor yeah what's the secret of becoming a voice actor well I think you'll agree and I think one of the things that's a huge misconception with what we do is people <laughs> people just think it's about just doing voices and that yes. could, couldn't be farther from the truth it's uh, you gotta be an actor. Yeah, I have a video called "How to Become a Voice Actor" on my channel, and that was my number one thing. If you're not a good actor, yeah. you're the guy with the lampshade on at the party that can do funny voices. It makes no difference. No, get in the studio. You can't act. The voice is the last thing that kind of comes into play. Mm -hmm. Is you you research the character and you find out the background on that person and everything else, and, and then what their idiosyncrasies are and what. The, you know their their various um, characteristics are as an yeah. individual and what they've been through and all those things and you have to like take all that stuff in and then do something with it and and then you need to when you're there not make it say like you can't sound like you're reading off a script so then, <laughs> sometimes you ask people when they come in and they do battle scenes and they're new and you, they've got the like, like <laughs> 
and doing all that stuff, and they don't know how, like how big to push it. Yeah. And you see them in there, and they go, uh, 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 and we're sitting there going, oh, no, you got it. Yeah. Or, or when they do do it big, they do it like this. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Three sounds exactly the same. Exactly the same. What, what would you say is your ultimate dream car? Dream car? Mm -hmm. I have a pension for Aston Martins. I love them. I just you're think that James, it's just you're a, a James Bonner. Well, it's just for me. It's just <laughs> it's just the right mix and blend of of being a supercar without being obnoxious. What's the favorite game? Video game you've ever worked on? Oh, worked on. Hmm. I did have a lot of fun with Death Spank. I know, and that's it, right? Like a lot that's of people. That's an odd thinking, name. I know. <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> yes. I, yes. Um, you know my channel is uh, <laughs> PG, right? It was, and you had to find thongs. What? Yeah. What? You voice Toa Kapaka in Bionicle Mask of Light. Yes. Were you aware your line, not luck, it's what you do that makes you a hero, became perhaps one of the most legendary quotes in the Bionicle community to this day? Really? I have no idea. Well, I don't either. I just... <laughs> that's that's kind of cool. Thing. I didn't know you didn't that. I know that. Okay. No. Now you learned something today. I did. That's pretty cool. What's your favorite kind of food? Oh, I love... Um... I, I do love Japanese food, oh, yeah? and I love Indian food too. Oh, I like Indian food. Indian food is just so good. Oh, God. What head cannons do you have about Pythor? For example, does he have any family? What was his childhood like? Or simply, what's his favorite color? I know this question is a bit complicated, but I'm really interested in voice actors and their perspective on the characters based on their own voice. I think he wanted to love me as a child. Not having any hands made things rather difficult. Um, <laughs> he does have hands. That's the thing that makes it. Yeah, he does. does. He have hands? I think he does. Oh, crap. Does he? <laughs> I think he does. Because <laughs> he has a scepter. Man, we should have watched a Pythor episode before this. Because interview. he has a scepter. Yeah, he's, he's got to hold it with something. He's yes, he, no, he does have hands. All right. So he's a very. So there, he was shunned because he was the only snake with hands. There. Yes. On the DVD version of episode 12, Rise of the Great Devourer, oh, yeah, right. Pyther says, shut up and drive to the bu bus driver. Yes, I remember that, yeah. Yet, in the TV version, Pyther says, quiet, let's go, boys. Is there any special reason for the difference in lines? Yes, because shut up's not nice. It's harsh. So you did it both ways in the studio, I'm guessing. Yeah. And they went with the safe version for TV. You would say to kids, like, it's not nice to tell somebody to shut up. Yeah, so but why would they, is a nice, is why a, is would they put it on the DVD, though? Because parents would still buy D, the DVD. For That's it. a good question. That's the question. I think maybe because, uh, uh, see, if, see if you think I might be right here. If, the, if you buy a DVD, you've made it a purchase, a knowledgeable purchase, and right. you brought that in. But something like TV, you have no choice what's coming through. Like if you have it, turn on to that, whatever's streaming through. So, so I think be quiet for the, for the broadcast version right. was the safer okay. choice. Is Starscream the best villain of all time? Ooh. Your dog thinks so. <laughs> like what? When we did this, the, the three series that we did, I loved the story arc with, with, with Starscream. I think saying, um, I think saying the best villain of all time, I mean, it would be, be kind of cool if you could say something like that, but I mean, there's been some pretty amazing villains. I really like Starscream. As a kid, I like Starscream a lot. I like the way he was torn. Can we hear him? Yes, Megatron! No, Megatron! Because I'm a big fan of the G1 series and everything, too. Yeah. So, so Chris Lotta, of course, played Starscream back then. Yeah. I changed some elements of him. Instead of doing a... I, I chose... I made a conscious choice not to do a... An impersonation of what Chris Lada was doing. Right. And I think when I got it, people listened to it. And it because it's funny, because I'm really happy about how it turned out, because it turned out really well where people began to like me. Right. But in the beginning, yeah, there was lots of people saying a lot of negative stuff about well, what I was doing yeah, with the character. If you're, if you're doing somebody else, a role that's been done by somebody yeah. else, you're going to get hate. A lot, a lot of people said I sucked. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then it's so cool now because. Now I, I'm getting the love now, Brent. Yeah. It's nice. Like, people are saying really nice things. So, in the beginning, 
I was trying to explain to everybody, I was saying Chris Lada, that should be his error. Yeah. And then this was a different incarnation of Starscream and I and I and as an homage to him, I didn't want to do yeah. exactly what yeah. he did. I thought that his work should stand alone on itself. First time I said transform. Isn't that cool? I was literally like, I would do this job for free. Like, yes. I said that to Terry. Yeah. I said I said I, I this I have to say this. I said this is this is one of the series that I would have done for free just to be on it. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Transformers was for me a uh, major highlight. Yeah, it was for me too. That was um, pretty cool, but yeah, you're right. Well, the first well time done. you get to say Transform. Decepticon and uh, Autobot here. I know. Transform! What's your opinion on voicing the dumbest character in Bionicle franchise? Which is Krekka. Not a hate comment, just a question. What do you want to do? You know? Just happy to have the paycheck? You, you know, like, people aren't going to be... Like, he's, probably his action figure's not flying off the shelf. Or maybe, no. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel about coming back in Day of the Departed as Pythor? Yes! If you could be Pythor but in a different Serpentine tribe, which would you choose? Hypnobri, Fangpire, Constricti, or Venomari? Well, I'd probably have to go to Constricti because, I mean, I'd have to be true to my people like, because I believe Pythor, a python, is constricted. So, I have to go with those. I mean, family and all that. Any voice actors or screenwriters or directors that you admire and wish to work with? Ooh. Somebody who would really turn my crank to work with is Stephen Moffat, who writes for Doctor Who. I just I just think he's a very interesting person. I love it. I love the, I love where his mind goes and the, the types of stories that he creates. I do play a lot of bad guys. I was Cobra Commander too, which was fun. Oh, Cobra Commander and G.I. Joe? Yeah. Do you like playing villains or the hero? I think I enjoy playing villains probably more. You know what was crazy? Was Brian was working away trying to get into into the Bez. Yes, and he was, like, he was thrown in on uh, Ninjago. Sorry, in case they don't know who he was. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and they kept, Paul and I both were saying to him, buddy, just hang in there. And he, he was saying stuff like, it's been four months, and I'm running. And we're like, right. It's like yeah. nothing. Like, yeah. It took me years to get in. Yeah. And, um, and he was thinking about throwing in the towel, and then what's the first thing he gets? Skeletor. What a way to come out of the gate. Yeah. We're like so proud of him. Oh, I bet. It, it's, um, it's like, Brian, you're Skeletor. Way to go, Brian. Yeah. Any tips for people who are interested in jumping into the business? Well, I think one of the, one of the best skills you could have, other than taking acting classes, is improvisation. Okay. Because you know a lot of times we have to really think of things fast. Um, particularly a lot of times when we're in the studio and other characters come up for grabs, right. often they'll just, you know, they'll sit there and go, just point at him and say, what are you going to do for this yeah, character? Yeah, and yeah. You, immediately you've got to have something. And that's, that's the way this job goes a lot of the time. So basically you think that people should um, do a voice demo with you at your studio? I think it provided. I think first of all, <laughs> you got You should have the. the that you was should, the improv. See that was, see, that was, that was very good. See that right there is what you. Yeah. And your dog snorted at the same time. Yeah, so she's very good at improv. Yeah, yeah. She's the, your dog's the improv. I have studied queen. with her for a long time. It's kind of like Yoda and Luke Skywalker. That's our relationship. <laughs> um, how similar um, do you think Pythor is to Loki? Uh, he could be Loki's grandfather. Loki. Come into my office, please. I think we need to have a word. You were in uh, Max Steel. Yeah. Did you enjoy spending your afternoons with Andrew Francis? <laughs> yeah. I've known Andrew since he was a kid. Like, the first thing that we worked on together yeah. was, was uh, well, we did a bunch of anime stuff over at Ocean, first off. And that's when he was just a little kid. But I remember the day when he, st when he came into Action Man, and there's this kid that I'd known for like quite a few years. So he walks into the room and he's playing a super villain yeah. and this big booming voice comes out of him like, Andrew's not little anymore. His dog pooped during the interview. Bento. Bento, Bento, Bento. <laughs> How are you, you so... a little Pythor out of him. <laughs>